Hello, my name is Lois Mwangi, the SAIS Safety Program Coordinator at the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Welcome to this sixth episode of the Ask Your Aviator series. And today, we're going to be discussing about the training opportunities at the East African School of Aviation. With me, we have three panelists who will give us more insights about the training opportunities at the East African School of Aviation. We have Dr. Mugambi, who is the director at the East African School of Aviation. We have Ms. Mary Sindiga, who is the head of the Curriculum Development Unit, and Mr. Brian Moravi, who is a student at the East African School of Aviation and is a student leader. Um, the East African School of Aviation is a training directorate of the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, which is a parastatal in the Ministry of Transport, Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development. The East African School of Aviation was founded in 1954 to provide training for telegraphic and teleprinter operators and was expanded in 1960 to cater for engineering technicians and air traffic controllers. In July 1963, operations of the East African School of Aviation were entrusted to the International Civil Aviation Organization and later came under the auspice of the East African community. In 1985, the East African School of Aviation moved to the present location where we are here in Embakasi and it has the capability to train all major specialized areas of civil aviation except pilot training. Dr. Bugambi, welcome to this episode. Uh, could you kindly give us an introduction and a background of how you joined uh, YASA as we call it and uh, your role in the school? Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, hello, viewers. My name is uh, Dr. Mugambi Tonchebere, and I am the director of the East African School of Aviation. My background is training. I have been training most of my life uh, as a university lecturer. Uh, I, jo I joined East African School of Aviation from Moi University, where I was in charge of the School of Business Training Programs at the Nairobi campus. I joined the school in November uh, 2014. The East African School of Aviation, as you have been told, is the training directorate of Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. The school is also regional training center of excellence, having achieved the highest accreditation by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. We are also an aviation security training uh, center, one of the 32 in the world. We are also one of the uh, 21 regional training centers of excellence uh, accredited by the ICAO. Uh, the East African School of Aviation is uh, organized in three training uh, departments. We have the Department of Air Navigation Services and Aircraft Maintenance. We have the Department of Aviation Safety and Security Management. And we have the Department of Aviation Business uh, Management. Uh, the school uh, offers uh, training, again, as you have been told, in all major specializations of aviation, except uh, pilot training. Uh, that was being offered uh, in uh, Uganda at Soroti uh, under the old uh, EAC uh, or East African Community Protocols. Uh, Kenya was in charge of uh, aviation training related to air traffic control and uh, air navigation technicians, and uh, Uganda was offering uh, pilot training, whereas uh, Tanzania was offering uh, training that was related to aviation management systems. Uh, Kenya has continued uh, training in our areas of competence, but uh, there is pilot training uh, uh, being done by other ATUs that are mostly are at Wilson Airport. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Mugambi, for that uh, brief introduction and some part of history to explain uh, how what IASA is all about. I'd like to give this opportunity to Mary Mary Sindiga, to introduce herself and a brief background of your role at uh, East African School of Aviation. Thank you, Lois. Hello, viewers. My name is Mary Kanuna Sindiga. 
As you have been told, I am the head curriculum development unit at the East African School of Aviation. Now, I joined the East African School of Aviation in 2008, July. By that time, I joined as uh, an examinations officer charged with the mandate to establish the examinations unit at the school. Now, I am the head curriculum development unit and research, and my role at the East African School of Aviation in that docket entails overseeing the development of standardized training packages or training programs, both for global use under the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, Global Aviation Training, the Training Air Plus program, we call it. Now, apart from being a course developer at the school, I also do instructional duties for some specified courses of ICAO. Now, other than that, the unit is also the one that is responsible for research, coordinating research at the school. Now, apart from that, I do serve as a care focal point, whereby I coordinate all the courses conducted at the East African School of Aviation that are from ICAO. So that is what I do for now. And I came to the East African School of Aviation from Egerton University, where I was serving as the assistant registrar in charge of examinations. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for that uh, introduction. Uh, last but not least, we have uh, Brian, Brian Moredi, who's a student here at, at uh, the East African School of Aviation. Uh, kindly give us an introduction about yourself. OK. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian, and I am the current Secretary General of the Student Council at East African School of Aviation. My role as a student leader is to serve as a bridge between the administration side and the student side. In that, if the administration wants to implement a new strategy that will have a positive impact to the student academics, if they want to adjust the timetable to, sit, to suit the students, they have to discuss with us and it is our responsibility as the student leaders to make sure the students understand how, the, how these changes will have a positive impact to the academic strategies in Atiasa. Thank you very much, Brian. And uh, what course are you currently studying? I'm currently in Module 2, Year 2, taking a diploma course in aeronautical engineering. Quite impressive. Good. I will start uh, with, with some of the questions that we have received from our peers. There's a question here that uh, we received from uh, Faisal Zain. And his question was, do you uh, give marshalling classes? Uh, thank you, Lois. Uh, the East African uh, School of Aviation, as I earlier said, offers training in all areas of uh, civil aviation except uh, pilot uh, training. And these courses are arranged uh, uh, within three departments that I talked about. Uh, the Department of uh, Air Navigation Services and Aircraft Maintenance, where we have the engineering courses the air traffic control courses and uh, aeronautical information services and other related courses. Uh, we also have the Department of Aviation uh, Safety and Security Management, where we have government safety inspector courses and all other courses that involve uh, civil aviation uh, oversight, including other regulated courses uh, like uh, flight uh, operation officer, course or uh, flight uh, uh, dispatch. We also have other diploma courses that are uh, critical to ensuring uh, a safe and secure civil aviation uh, system. Under this department also, we are collaborating with other uh, academies across the world, including Singapore Aviation Academy, Federal Administration Aviation Academy of America, and uh, Incheon uh, Aviation Academy of South Korea in uh, offering courses in, uh, in safety or that ensure safety of the aviation system that we may not be having at the East African School of Aviation. Our training is organized in uh, two areas. Ab initial training, which is for uh, freshers who come from high school and uh, other, uh, let's say, uh, basic uh, training institutions and, uh, and uh, in service for people who are already working for the aviation uh, system. 
Uh, marshalling is a course that relates uh, to those people who work at the airports, uh, more so who are involved uh, in, uh, in uh, parking of the aircrafts. Uh, we do offer this course, but it is on uh, request. Uh, we, we also have access to ICAO training packages, and there are other partners we work with under the ICAO Trainer Plus program who have developed an STP, that is a standard training package on marshalling. I would like my colleague, uh, Mary Sindiga, uh, to also say a little bit more about the courses that we do offer in uh, collaboration with the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. Uh, thank you, dear sir. Now, when I was doing my introduction, I did point out that YASA is designated or accredited by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, as a regional training center of excellence. That designation means that we are able, as a school, to access courses within the ICAO library and a trainer plus program and offer them at the East African School of Aviation on a need basis so long as we adhere to the requirements in terms of the instructors, in terms of the process of hosting those courses. That means, therefore, apart from what the director has explained as a repertoire of our courses, we have a wide range of courses that we can plug and play, as it were, on a need basis. Now, apart from that, we also have uh, the curriculum development unit that I mentioned, where I'm stationed or where I'm based. That unit has a care qualified curriculum designers or developers. And therefore, apart from picking or accessing courses from ICAO, we can also package or design or develop, if you wish, courses on a need basis for the customer as it would be. Now, under the Trainer Plus program, as the director has said, has mentioned, we have all manner of courses ranging from training, development, courses or what we call instructional systems development and design. We also have safety and safety management. We have aerodromes. We have air navigation services. We have management, aviation management as well, a few of them, airport management, and of course the environment. The wide, wide range is there. So any customer or client who has a training need, even if that particular course is not listed in our website or in our training calendar, if you reach out to the East African School of Aviation, we will guide you in terms of its availability because as the director has said, we are authorized actually to train in all areas, in all fields of aviation, except flight training. Thank you. To add on what uh, Mary has said, mm -hmm. as an ICAO Regional Training Center of Excellence, we have a responsibility to train for the Africa in the Indian Ocean region, the AFI region. So East African uh, School of Aviation is a truly uh, regional school that has trained uh, personnel from across all the states of Africa in the area of uh, air navigation uh, services, uh, aviation safety and security, and aviation uh, management. That, that is really good. Mary, I would like to get back to you. There's the question we received from Eddie, one of our viewers, who was asking what are the qualifications to become a pilot and how long does it take? Well, thank you for that question. Actually, for outsiders, um, aviation is quite a mystery and I hope uh, we'll have several of these sessions to try and demystify and probably guide the, the, the audience out there in terms of uh, what is available and what can be done in terms of training. Now, as the director has just explained, the East African School of Aviation does not offer flight training. But the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, the Civil Aviation Regulations, Personnel Licensing Regulations, Part 5, 6 and 7, has a lot of details in terms of the training requirements for pilots. And therefore, I would refer the person who asked that question to the regulations because those regulations are the ones that uh, give guidance in terms of what constitutes or what is expected, what is required as far as pilot training is concerned. 
Now that is the information that uh, the flight training schools that are available, even in Kenya here, pick and then convert them into training objectives and eventually training programs to meet the requirements of those regulations. Remember, aviation training has several varieties of training or categories of training. And flight training falls under the category that is regulated. What does that mean? That means that the training can only be offered through approved training organizations. These organizations are training schools, aviation training schools, that have met specific prescribed requirements by the Civil Aviation Authority, KCAA, and have been certified and therefore given the authorization to conduct those trainings. Now, both the personnel licensing regulations are available in ICAO website, in the, sorry, KCA website, and also the approved training organizations, the list is also available in the KCAA website. So if the participant or the, the, the viewer who has that question refers to the website, the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority website, you'll get all the information you need. And over and above that, any flying school that is on the list of ATOs on that website meets those requirements. Thank you. Uh, to add to that, uh, I would like to let the viewers know that the East African School of Aviation is ATO number one. <laughs> that, that, is, that is good to know, uh, Dr. Mugambi. And, and maybe, uh, Mary, you just add on that in terms of uh, the, the processes of joining IASA. How do you do the application and what is the process? Uh, thank you for that question. Is uh, you realize uh, the East African School of Aviation is purely a training school. Our mandate is training, training, and more training. Therefore, that is what we spend our day to day focus on training under the direction of the director. Now, that said, as the director has also mentioned, we have uh, several categories of courses ranging from ab initio to in service or professional trainings. What happens is that every year we produce a calendar of courses that we intend to offer to willing or potential trainees. This calendar lists all the courses, including the dates or the timelines when they will be offered. So one, a potential trainee at the East African School of Vision could apply directly to any of those courses that are listed on the calendar, as well as on the website, the school's website as well. Once we receive that uh, application, we process it, get back to you in terms of what you need to bring, what the fee payment will be like, and also the modalities of joining the school. That is one. Now, secondly, we are also getting trainees placed by the COOPS, the Kenya Universities and uh, Colleges Placement Body. So you can also apply through COOPS to some of our courses. And once you file the application, you will get the admission letter and any other details that uh, pertain to you participating in the particular course you have applied for. Thirdly, you can also walk in. Our gates are always open. The reception is always ready to guide you in terms of any courses that you may wish to apply for. And once you walk in here, we'll take you through the processes until eventually we give you a letter of admission detailing the requirements, what you need to do, and eventually you are joining the school and we induct you, we orient you, and take you through the training process. Also, you may be wondering about uh, maybe an employer somewhere who may have a group of employees or workers that he or she would like to have trained. That is also possible. We do welcome corporate clients where an employer comes and tells us we need training for this number of trainees and uh, we would like to discuss with you the modalities of having that training conducted. We do that both on site at the school here. You can come here and we conduct the training. And it can also be tailor-made or customized to your needs. But we can also do the training off-site at your premises, if that is what works for you. We are flexible, as you can see. I think uh, that does it for me now. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the East African School of Aviation has entered into uh, uh, contractual arrangements 
with different states uh, to train their personnel within the CAA, the civil aviation uh, uh, system. And uh, those uh, contracts do specify how the training uh, will be done. Uh, uh, as uh, Mary has said, it can be done at the site. So a uh, component of training is both local and international. And uh, we, we have also arrangement with the International Civil Aviation Organization where if they identify a state with a training gap, they can also get to us uh, to offer that uh, training. And through this kind of uh, arrangement, we have been able to train for states even uh, outside Africa, like uh, Thailand and uh, others, including... Uh, we, the Middle East Cairo office as well. Yeah. yeah. So, May I add something also? Um, yeah. In line with what the director has just explained about the international civil aviation courses, if you log into the training portal of ICAO, every time we schedule the ICAO courses, you'll find them there. They are already scheduled and you can uh, log in, do an application, we'll get access to it and we will uh, process you in terms of admission, especially the courses that are offered in collaboration with ICAO. Well, that is great to hear. We want to go in into more about being a student and, and Brian is here to tell us about his experience uh, about being a student here in Yasa. What is your experience and uh, would you advise a potential student, one of our viewers who, out there who'd like to study uh, a course in aviation, would you advise them to join Yasa? Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. My journey with Yasa started back way back in September 2018. Uh, I, was, I applied through COOPS and I was placed here. COOPS is a, is a government body. I enrolled for a diploma in engineering course. We are taught about the systems, about aircraft maintenance is about maintaining an aircraft to maintain its airworthiness condition. And it's a three-year three program. And apart from that, there are many other courses which are offered here at IASA. The library has been well equipped. It is, it is ultra-modern. It has an OPAC system, which is an online catalog where you can find access to all the examination and research items that you want at, at the comfort of your home, at the comfort of your room, at the comfort of each and every class where you're working, you're still researching, you're still studying. Even the lecturers themselves, they are very supportive. These are people who have been in the, in, in the industry for quite some time, so they have some background experience in what they are teaching. So I would urge each and every student out there, if you really want to challenge yourself, if you really want to stand out, come to IASA and I guarantee you this is a step that you'll never regret in your life. Thank you, Brian, for that. It's, it's a really a nice experience and students out there, potential students, if you're thinking of a career choice, aviation would be it and I would encourage even the ladies um, to, to jump onto this bandwagon and, and enjoy this uh, high that we are on uh, in aviation. Let me, let, me, let me add something about that. Yes, for the ladies, please. actually, in my own personal experience where I'm studying in my own class, the ladies are very tough, as in the ladies compete with us and they, are much, they perform much more better compared to us, the gentlemen. So any lady out there, this, you stand out. As an aviator, you stand out better than even the gentlemen around you. So I urge you, just dare, if you, if you dare to become different, just take, up, take, take part in this program. Lois, I also have some experience to share. Yes, please do. Uh, I always also admired uh, to be an aviator. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, what was in my mind was to become a pilot. Uh, but, uh, you know, training for pilot was uh, way beyond the means of my family. Uh, so I ended up in the university where I did the Bachelor of Commerce. Uh, all the way to PhD level, mm -hmm. but that never died. When mm -hmm. I was in the Moy University and I heard that uh, our school was uh, in the process of uh, collaborating with the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, I joined the team uh, that uh, worked on the programs that were later offered uh, at the East African School of Aviation. Out of that interest, I also joined as one of the instructors uh, teaching research methods and uh, strategic management. 
And that is how I learned of an opening uh, at the, Ken uh, the East African School of Aviation. So I applied for the position of the director and uh, the rest is history. So you can see also my passion in aviation. Yes. I came at a much later stage when now I'm an adult. <laughs> yes, it's the, the bug sticks. You just have to, you know, get it over and done with and you have to get in there. So it's not too late, um, even for someone who uh, has already done their initial training, you can still come and join us in the industry. That, that's what it's all about. Okay, um, we have a question here from one of our viewers, and what they're asking is, does the East African School of Aviation offer accommodation to students who are not from Nairobi? This is from Charlo. I'll pose that question to you, Dr. Mugambi. Thank you, Lois. The East African School of Aviation has uh, hostel facilities. There are limited uh, hostel uh, facilities, and uh, we do cater uh, on first-come, first-served basis for those uh, students who would wish to live within the school, more so those who are coming uh, from abroad or uh, from uh, far-flung uh, towns in uh, Kenya. Uh, we have uh, a catering uh, division uh, that uh, takes care of uh, the students who reside uh, within uh, the institution. We also have uh, laundry services in case those students would like to be uh, given uh, such uh, services. Uh, I am always told uh, by students, our catering services is uh, like a three-star hotel. So uh, we do have that. And uh, if you would wish to live, uh, to reside in the campus, uh, that uh, uh, option is there. Oh, that is good. Um, we have another question here. Hello, how many intakes do you offer and how can I apply? Also on the matter of training fee, do I have to pay all of it up front? This question is from Peggy Mwanza. Madam Mary Sindiga can uh, talk a little bit about uh, the intakes and the, uh, the director, Dr. Mugambi, can tell us about the fee payment and the structure. Okay, thank you. Now, as I said a little while ago, is we do have uh, various intakes because, like I said, you can apply through COOPS. And if you apply through COOPS, then uh, the timelines are in line with the COOPS requirements or the regime. However, we do have two intakes. The director will correct me if I'm wrong, every year. But, as I also mentioned, there is opportunity to make a request for run intake if you have a group of trainees that you would like to bring over at the East African School of Aviation. Now that said, it is not like uh, we do not uh, build in flexibility into our intakes. We do, depending on certain uh, circumstances. Now as everybody is aware, the present situation under COVID-19 is quite hectic and complicated. So I would like the director to chip in because most of our schedules for this year were disrupted by the COVID-19 situation and the inability to carry out uh, the classroom face-to-face -face training, but we do have online training also going on. So I would like the director to elaborate on our intakes going forward as he talks about the fees as well. Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, as I said earlier, our training is in two categories we have the ab initial training for the high school leavers. And we have professional in-service uh, training. For the ab initial training, we divide it again into three categories. We have the long-term training that takes uh, three years. This one, we have two intakes. We have an intake in September and another one in January or May depending on uh, the applications. We also have uh, uh, now the training uh, for the professionals, the in-service professional uh, training. Uh, this training is uh, determined uh, at the beginning of the year and uh, we share the calendar, our training calendar with our uh, 
clients, prospective, and the existing ones. And if you visit our website, you will be able to see or to find this calendar there. And it has clearly specified the dates when these courses uh, will run. However, we, uh, we, you can request, you can put up a request for training and we will consider depending on the availability of uh, the instructors. And this training can be done here at the school or at the site. We offer also site training where instructors uh, come to your uh, states or come to your organizations uh, to offer the training. As Mary said, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, came with a big challenge on training. So uh, from 20th March, we closed school until Oct October 5th. Of course, this now interrupted uh, the training uh, programs, uh, but uh, we came up uh, with the online training. We migrated our courses into the online platform and we continued the uh, training, even though there was no classroom training. But now we are back fully uh, in, uh, to classroom training. Uh, we have uh, come up with uh, protocols that are required by the Ministry of Health to ensure safe uh, 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 training uh, at, uh, at the school. We have also met the requirements of the civil, the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority on uh, identifying the risks and uh, coming up with mitigation uh, strategies that can assure that the classroom uh, training uh, can resume. Having said that, when it comes to our fees uh, structure, we have come up with a very affordable uh, fee uh, uh, structure for our courses. As, we, as you may be aware, uh, aviation training is a quite expensive affair in terms of the equipment, uh, the simulators and the laboratories, aerodynamics uh, equipment that are used uh, for the training. And also the, 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 the cost of the instructors themselves. Uh, for some courses we have to get instructors and, uh, and specialists from across the world. So it is very expensive. However, what Kenya Civil Aviation Authority has done, because the mandate of the East African School of Aviation is partly to train for the industry, is to subsidize, to subsidize for the ab initial students so that this training is affordable. So in our fees regime, we break down our fees according to terms. Uh, in uh, some courses, we have three terms in one year. In other courses, we have two terms. And even within a term, we try and, uh, we try and introduce flexible payment uh, methods uh, that uh, is broken into installments. So we say, for example, for the engineering course, term one, you will pay uh, 60 percent uh, and then uh, within the first month and uh, within the second month, you pay 40 percent. So we have uh, tried to be as flexible as possible because we want uh, this training uh, to reach out to everybody, everybody in Kenya. Uh, we don't want, we want to demystify aviation training as not being only for the elites. We want all learners who are interested in aviation uh, to take the training uh, regardless of their financial status. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as it is right now, Kenya Civil Aviation Authority is discussing even at the board level to come up uh, with a fund in, con in collaboration with the a higher education loans board that will be used uh, to further subsidize fees uh, for those uh, learners who come from unfortunate backgrounds. Well, quite some plans there, uh, Director. Uh, so get on to the uh, East African School of Aviation website, that is www.easa.com. 
www.ac.ke. Get more information on the course intakes, the fees structure, the fee uh, payment is flexible as what uh, Dr. Mugambi has advised us. So you can join uh, the school easily and become a student. And talking about being a student, Brian, I come back to you. Um, just want to find out what stands out about IASA. IASA tries to develop each and every student that walks in to a fully developed individual. By this I mean that we have the CU, which develops you to grow spiritually. We have a basketball pitch, which has been constructed and fully developed right now. We also have an Olympic size swimming pool, which is fully accessible. And we also have the choir. Choir is a group that has performed even to national levels. We also have the basketball team, which last year was number two nationally. And through this, I think Yasa is the best incubator to develop you, to nurture your goals, to nurture your talents, and also to develop you academically, to become the professional engineer, professional, professional dispatcher, professional cabin crew member that the industry requires you to become. Quite impressive, uh, Brian. I, I like that that now there, there, there are a lot of co-curricular activities, um, your uh, participation in sports, uh, in uh, mus music choirs. I didn't know that uh, uh, Yasa went all the way to the nationals. That's quite, that's really nice. Um, we uh, even won. Oh, you won. It's not <laughs> only that you went to nationals. Uh, yes. We won a number of uh, trophies. Yes, and, and, and maybe uh, to come to something else that uh, one of the viewers has asked us. We have a question here from Dennis Cascon who, who says he, I was a student at Flight Dispatch Management and graduated in 2007 with a diploma. Unfortunately, I have unsuccessfully sought attachment, hence lack of employment. My question to the panelists is, after all these years, should I kill my hope for employment in aviation? If not, what would it take? What can you advise this young man? Uh, thank you, Lois. Uh, first of all, Dennis, I feel for you that uh, after all the training, you were not able to get uh, placement uh, within uh, the industry. Viewers, the East African School of Aviation attracts its students. And that is even why we have such kind of forums. Last year, we conducted uh, a broad-based uh, study to find out where our students go and what impact they're having in the industry. From that study, we discovered that 51% uh, of our trainees, and this is the ab initio students, because the in-service students are already employed, they are coming to sharpen their skills. Uh, this 51% absorption rate is way above the national average for universities and the tertiary colleges in Kenya. Those who are not absorbed do go for further uh, studies at the degree level. And uh, there are also other who, go to, uh, who, who get uh, opportunities in other industries. Unfortunately, there are some of our students who do not uh, find uh, placement out there. And uh, really, in life, it happens. And I feel for you, uh, Dennis. Uh, what I would like uh, to encourage you to do is get in touch uh, with the school through the Dean of Students, and we will see what we can do in terms of uh, your attachment. I would also wish uh, to appeal to any of our students out there who might be in the same uh, situation uh, to get in touch with us, with the Dean of Students, uh, and we, we try and see how we can be of uh, help. Uh, the, the East African School of Aviation uh, has been championing uh, relationships with the aviation industry, and every year we do have a conference that brings stakeholders uh, together. Uh, of course, this year we have not been able to have one because of the COVID pandemic. But last year, uh, the, the, the Director General and other captains of the industry did uh, offer to engage or to engage with training institutions
uh, to come up with the programs uh, that would uh, ensure a smooth transition to the industry from the training institutions. Because all records, all reports point that there is uh, insufficient, insufficiency of trained personnel in the aviation industry. Of course, these are now at middle level and higher levels. At the entry level, that problem is there, and we are committed as the trainers, uh, working together with the industry to find a solution so that the transition from training uh, to employment is smooth. Um, that is something quite important uh, that is required for industry, and I'm happy that it's already happening uh, with uh, the, the, the championship of uh, the Director General of KCA and uh, Director Dr. Mugambi. Let me add something kindly. Add something. Okay. So uh, that is a problem that I also personally underwent through when I was looking for my attachment period. And mine is a, just a proposal. If, if these institutions, these training institutions can have an, maybe an MOU with the organizations in the industry, a program where maybe the top 10 students in every institution can be directly absorbed. Just have that MOU with maybe KQ, with maybe JumboJet, with those companies. I think it will really assist because people are working hard. People are really struggling to, to perform better, but they're still not being absorbed. If it's for my attachment, then what about that job? That, what about the job? Thank you, Brian, uh, for that uh, suggestion you have given. Uh, on coming up uh, with the MOUs with the operators. Uh, I am happy to report that uh, this, is, this has already started. We are developing and we are signing MOUs with the operators. We also have uh, a, 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 an attachment coordinator who works uh, with the Dean of Students in ensuring that uh, uh, we have uh, positions or we, we, we are sourcing for positions of attachment for our uh, students. Okay. We are also working with the industry and the authority through the stakeholder conferences that we hold annually uh, to try and see how we can address transition into the employment from the training. Because uh, all reports do show that uh, at middle level and top level, we do not actually have uh, skilled aviation personnel. Uh, the entry level is what we are addressing, and I am sure once the programs that are in place are, in, are, are completed, then we will, uh, we, we will uh, improve the absorption of uh, the trainees in the aviation uh, uh, industry. Uh, and, and when we talk about um jobs, skills, and all that, um, it brings me to uh, a question where Mary can tell us more, because you've been working with the ICAO program of the next generation of aviation uh, professionals. And maybe you can tell us more about what are the opportunities for the young generation in Kenya in pursuing aviation? Uh, thank you, Lois, for that question. I'm sure that is uh, too much as we are uh, focused on training, training with a purpose. And uh, definitely, everyone who gets into training, even at the East African School of Vision or anywhere else, desires to get uh, engaged somewhere gainfully in line with the knowledge and skills they have acquired. Uh, that said, I feel, Dennis, the former student who has asked whether he should give up on his dream of becoming an aviator. And I'll start by commenting and saying that you never should never, no one should ever shelve their dreams. No one should ever give up their dreams. The going may appear to be quite tough at some point, but if I may borrow from the experience of the director next to me here, he wanted to join aviation as a pilot. And you can see, and years later, he never killed that dream. He joined aviation, he became an aviator. I'll bet from a different perspective. So, Dennis. You shouldn't do that, and probably to explain why you shouldn't give up your dream of becoming an aviator ever, I'll borrow some words from Henry Ford. So you are trying, and I quote, and when everything seems to be going against you, 
remember that the aircraft takes off against the wind, not with it. Now, that said, the next generation of aviation professionals is uh, a special program that ICAO has actually come up with because of projections, statistical projections that indicate that globally there is scarcity or the shortage of aviation personnel. And going forward, due to the growth in the air transport sector, this gap is going to keep widening. Also, there is also the other angle that uh, a lot of aviation professionals are aging. We have a lot of people who are very skilled, very competent, but with due respect, uh, they are somewhere around 50s and above. And we do not seem to be having the young people replacing them or joining the industry in large numbers sufficient enough to replace the aging personnel in the aviation industry. There's also the natural attrition. And uh, that's why Danny shouldn't give up because you can see the gap is there. But it may not happen tomorrow or the day after. But the projection and statistics are there that uh, personnel in the aviation industry ask us. And that is qualified, competent, specialized personnel. Now, the next generation of aviation professionals is a program under the ICAO where the issue is that we should start attracting young people into the industry, like Dennis, like others, so that we start training them, we start grooming them. But what is the problem? Again, the issue seems to be exactly what we are discussing here. Lack of probably enough or sufficient information, lack of uh, sufficient exposure in terms of the opportunities that are available in the aviation industry. In a previous uh, session, I did mention that people know air traffic controllers, if you talk about the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. People know pilots. But aviation is far much wider than that. So what I would uh, tell um, any prospective aviator out there is that do your research. Find out what aviation industry entails. It's so wide. I always say there's something for everyone. Both technical and the soft skills. Any angle, there are many. Remember the discussion we are having. Look for a credible training institution organization like the East African School of Aviation. Look for an approved training organization such that you get not only the required skills and competencies, but also credible, acceptable, and uh, that will take you where you need to go. And therefore, any person out there who is desirous of joining the aviation industry in any capacity or in any area of specialization, I would say, whatever your heart desires, go for it. It's yours to have. Well said, Mary. Dreams are valid and the statistics are there. Numbers do not lie. So as we come to a close to this discussion, I'd like us to give a parting shot on, on what differentiates IASA as the East African School of Aviation from other training institutions. Maybe I can start with uh, Brian. Personally, I think IASA is the best school out there because of the, the staff, both the teaching personnel and the support staff. Because these are people who, who are qualified, they have personal, they have a background in what they are teaching, and the supporting staff, they are very committed to their, what they do. In order to achieve something, it's a chain. You have each and every individual plays an important role. So if it's that support staff, if it's that administration personnel, if it's that teaching personnel, I think YASA has the perfect, perfect environment to, to nurture someone to become, to become great. Mary, we can get your parting shot. So why YASA? Why YASA? Now, the East African School of Aviation, as we have said throughout this discussion, is not only accredited and approved, it is not only a regional training center of excellence and ICAO, it's also an approved training organization under the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority regulations. But that's not why I would choose the answer for somebody, for my daughter, for my niece, for my son, and for a friend. It is because that IASA 
we actually cross the T's and dot all the I's as well. But even after we have done that, we still ask you viewers and anyone we interact with as far as training is concerned to give us your feedback. We are always looking for continuous improvement. Thank you. Uh, last but not <laughs> least, uh, Dr. Mugambi, <laughs> <laughs> tell us why should uh, we consider the East African School of Aviation? Lois, we say at YASA, sky is only but the lower limit. We develop our learners holistically. We give them the requisite skills, the attitude to excel in whatever they do. And that is why we are different. We are a center of excellence. We are the aviation training center of choice. Thank you. Well, that was an interesting discussion. And from the party in short, we've had there's a good community here, the lecturers, the instructors, the support staff. So viewers, we've come to the end of this engaging discussion where we talked about the training opportunities at the East African School of Aviation. You can engage us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and on our website. And also you can visit us at the main campus here at Embakasi and the satellite campus at the Wilson Airport. And with that, goodbye and have a good day.